we're going to take a look at some basic concepts behind the time value of money. We're going to look at future values and the concept of compounding, and we're going to talk about present values and something called discounting. Our basic formula or relationship for the time value of money is given by the following formula. Our future value equals a present value times 1 plus r to the n, where fv stands for the future value of our cash flow. The pv represents the present value of our cash flows. The r is the interest rate, and n is the number of periods. One thing we're going to make notice of is that when we talk about an interest rate, at first we're going to talk about an annual interest rate, so n will be the number of years. But if we were to talk about a quarterly interest rate, n would be the number of periods. Let's go ahead and take a look at a particular problem. There are three ways to calculate our future values. One is using a mathematical formula. The second is using a financial calculator. And the third is to use some future value factor tables. We're going to begin by taking a look at how to calculate future values using mathematical formulas. Let's begin with an initial investment or bank balance of say $100. And we're going to leave it in the bank for one year at a 10% interest rate. We can see using our mathematical formula where we take our present value, which was the initial balance of $100, and multiply it by 1 plus the 10% interest rate to the 1 power for one compounding period, that we would have an ending balance of $110. If we leave this money in the bank for a second year, we would have $121. The key point to notice is that in the second year, we earn $11 in interest, whereas in the first year, we only earn $10 in interest. This is referred to as compound interest. We are now earning interest on our interest. In the first year, we had $100 working for us, but in the second year, we have $110 working for us. So we earn an additional $1 in interest. And again, we can use our mathematical formula and take our $100 present value and multiply it by 1 plus the 10% interest rate to the second power. If we were to leave the money in the bank for a third year, it would grow to $133. And a fourth year, it would grow to $146.41. The second method for solving these future value problems is to use our financial calculator. Our financial calculator has five basic fields, N for the number of periods, I for an interest rate, PV for the present value, payment for a recurring annuity cash flow. We won't be using that in this discussion. We'll talk about it in a more advanced time value of money lecture on annuities. And then our future value, which is what we want to solve for in this case. Using your financial calculator, begin by entering four for the number of periods into your financial calculator. Enter 10 for the interest rate. Notice we don't enter 10% because it's already considered a percent. So enter Enter 10 for the interest rate, $100 for our present value, zero for the annuity payment or recurring cash flows because we don't have one. And finally, we'll solve for the future value and we get the same $146.41. One thing you might notice is in your financial calculator, the future value will show up as a negative amount. This is simply to reflect the directional flow of our cash flows. If we put $100 into the bank, we will be able to take out $146.41. Essentially, when using our financial calculator, we're instructing the calculator to put 4 in for the number of years in our mathematical formula, 10 for the interest rate, 100 for the present value, and to solve for the future value. So it's not really a black box or anything new. It's just doing the mathematical calculation for us without us having to do the particular programming. Let's go ahead and look at how we would solve this problem using a future value interest factor table. So again, the third way to calculate is our future value factor table. And essentially, we're going to solve the equation where our future value equals the present value multiplied by some future value interest factor for a particular interest rate and a particular number of periods. Here we have a typical future value interest factor table. And recall, our interest rate was 
10%. So let's go ahead and highlight the 10% column for our interest rate. And we are talking about a four year investment period. The 10% and the four years intersect and give us a factor of 1.4641. This is the same number we would get using our financial calculator if we increase the decimal places, or we would get using our mathematical formula. So in terms of using our future value interest factor, we will take the 1.4641 and multiply it by our $100 present value, and we get a future value of $146.41. So again, to review, we can calculate future values using our mathematical formula, where we take the $100 and multiply it by 1.1 to the fourth power. We can calculate our future values using our financial calculators. Or we can calculate our future values using a future value interest factor, which in this case was 1.4641. We multiply that factor by the $100 present value to solve for our future value. Let's go ahead and make some observations regarding future values. First, as very obvious, as we increase the number of periods or the time our money is invested, our future values increase over time. As we decrease the number of periods, the future value decreases. Also, not surprising, as we increase the amount of interest we earn, our future values increase at 12% instead of a hundred and our future value grows to um, $140. At 15%, it grows to $152. At 20%, it would grow to $172. So as the number of periods increase, our future values increase. And as our interest rate increases, our future value increases. And likewise, as the number of periods decreases, future values are smaller. And if our interest rate we can earn is lower, our future values, again, are smaller. Let's go ahead now and look at present values. We can calculate present values by taking our general formula for the future value and dividing both sides by the quantity 1 plus r to the n. When we do this, we see the present value is simply equal to our future value divided by 1 plus r to the n. Like for with our future value, there are three ways to calculate a present value with a mathematical formula, a financial calculator, or a present value factor table. Let's go ahead and take a look first at calculating present values using our mathematical formula, which again was present value equals our future value divided by 1 plus r to the n. How much would we need to set aside today in order to have $100 in four years if we could earn 10% interest? Using our present value formula, we can see we would take the $100 divided by 1.1 to the fourth power and solving, we get $68.30. We can confirm this is the case by taking a look at what would be the future value of that $68.30 if we could invest it for 10 years, sorry, for four years at 10% interest. After one year, the 68 would grow to $75. In the second year, the $75 would go to $82. In the third year, the $82 would go to $90. And in the fourth year, the $90 would grow to $100. So indeed, we've confirmed that an initial investment today of $68 would indeed grow to $100 in four years. So we say that $68 is the present value, or we have discounted the value of that $100 cash flow. Things to notice, again, as the number of periods increases, our present values decrease. As the interest rate increases, the present values decrease. 
and of course vice versa. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would solve this using our financial calculator if we wanted to find the present value of $100 at a 10% interest rate for four periods. In our financial calculators, we would put 4 for the number of periods, 10 for the interest rate, 0 for the payment because we're not dealing with annuities yet, and our $100 as our future value and we would solve for the present value and get $68.30. And once again, all we're doing with our financial functions in our calculator is taking these inputs and putting them into our present value mathematical formula. The third way we could calculate our present values was to use a present value factor table. And again, our formula for doing it using factors will be we will simply take our future value and multiply it by a future value interest factor at i percent and for n periods. If you were to change the future value in your financial calculator to one dollar and change the decimal places displayed in your financial calculator, we could see that the present value interest factor for a one dollar investment at 10 percent interest for four years is 0 0.6830. That means every dollar that we're promised in four years is worth 68 cents or 68.3 cents today. Let's go ahead and look that factor up in our present value interest factor table. Coming over to our present value interest factor table, let's highlight the row for our 10% interest rate or column. Let's highlight the row for four periods and the two intersect at a present value interest factor of 0 0.6830. So to calculate the present value of $100 at 10% interest for four years, we can use our mathematical formula, we can use our financial calculators, or we can use our present value interest factor. We take the $100 future cash flow, multiply it by the 0 0.6830, which was our future value interest factor at 10% for four years, and we get the same present value of $68.30. And once again, we can confirm that that's the present value by taking that $68 and putting it in the bank and seeing how much interest we would earn over that four-year period if we could earn a 10% interest rate. And once again, as the interest rates lower, not surprisingly, we would have to put a larger amount in the bank today to have that same $100. If we could only earn 1% interest, we would need to deposit $96 in the bank today, the present value, to have it grow to $100 future value in four years. If, on the other hand, we could earn a 20% interest rate, we would only need to invest or deposit $48 today. And once again, if we were to leave our money in for a longer period of time, say eight years, we would only need to put in $23 today if we could earn a 20% interest rate. Let's go ahead and look at some other problems we might want to solve. We might want to know how long it would take for our investment to grow um, a certain amount. In this case, how many years will it take for a $1,000 investment to double? if we can earn a 12% annual interest rate. Let's go ahead and do this in our financial calculator. First, for our $1,000 investment to double, we're saying we want to have a future value of $2,000. So we'll put $2,000 in for the future value. We aren't dealing with an annuity, so again, we have zero for the payment. Our initial investment today was $1,000. Notice the sign difference between the present value and the future value. It really wouldn't matter which one we made positive and which one we made negative. One needs to be positive and one needs to be negative because one is a cash inflow and the other one would be cash we're taking out of the bank. Finally, we enter 12 for interest rate. And as a last step, we solve for the number of periods and we see it would take 6.12 years. We could also solve for a particular interest rate. It would take us an 11.61% interest rate if we left our money in for 10 years.